Hello, this is Kevin from Technical Support, and this video is titled Shearwall's Best Practices. Quick outline of this presentation. The majority of this presentation will be spent discussing structure blocks and how to utilize them. Next, we'll go over the Extend Walls Upwards button, recommendations for complicated roofs, recommendations for importing CAD drawings, and recommendations for interior walls. Understanding and utilizing structure blocks. I just want to establish when this step occurs during the shear walls modeling process. Structure blocks are the first step you need to complete in modeling after you have imported a CAD drawing as a template. Although you can skip the CAD import step and start modeling your structure by establishing your structure block. Structure blocks are used to establish the perimeter of the structure and the number of stories which the structure will consist of. Next up I want to highlight is the roof block input. This step comes after the structure block, wall view, and opening view, and is where you establish the shape of your roof for the purpose of generating loads. In the case of the model in this screen capture, the walls view and openings view were passed over quickly to get to the roof blocks view. So let's discuss common misconceptions that come up in regards to structure blocks and roof blocks. It is sometimes misinterpreted that your structure blocks need to match the roof blocks in your model perfectly, but this is not the case. Once you get to the roof blocks view, it is possible to draw multiple roof blocks in the same model, and these roof blocks do not need to match the structure blocks you originally established to create your model. Utilizing multiple structure blocks can unnecessarily overcomplicate a model and cause issues later on in the modeling process. So it is best to only utilize the number of structure blocks that are actually required for your model. In this presentation, we'll, as we go through it, we will discuss how many structure blocks and when to use them. The other common misconception in regards to structure blocks is that the structure blocks need to match the shape of the structure perfectly. Although this is once again not the case as once you have moved to the walls view, it is possible to split walls and move them using the mouse and shift key, or by moving walls manually by modifying their location in the walls input form view, as is highlighted in red in the bottom right corner of this slide. Just to reiterate the misconception related to structure blocks matching the shape of the structure. For this one story structure, it is not good practice to utilize multiple structure blocks in this case, where eight structure blocks are drawn to achieve the actual shape of the structure. We'll discuss how to properly establish structure blocks for this structure later on in the, the presentation. So, so once again, do not utilize multiple structure blocks to achieve the shape of your structure. Just want to go over how to move walls and shear walls. Say I have want to move wall A-1 to be on the other side of shear line B. Well, to do this is going to take two steps. First, we need to move line A-1 to be in line with shear line B. Then, move the segment to be on the other side of the shear line. This is one of the rules for moving walls, which you may run into when adjusting your model to match the actual shape of your structure. Now that we have established the misconceptions related to multiple structure blocks and how we can move walls to meet the shape of our structure, let's now go over why and when you would use multiple structure blocks. The main reason to use multiple structure blocks is for when you have portions of your structure that vary in height. So for instance, a two-story house attached to a one-story garage would be a good instance of using multiple structure blocks. One specified as two stories and the other specified as one. I also recommend using multiple structure blocks for irregular shape structures. Although, depending on the structure, there are exceptions to how many structure blocks should be utilized. We'll be going over a number of examples to give you an idea of where these exceptions might occur. So, for example, this two-story house is only one story where the garage is located, but is two stories where the main structure occurs. To model this structure, it would be appropriate to utilize two structure blocks. One specifies two stories for the main structure, and one specified as one story for the garage area. 
This is a six-story apartment building with essentially the same floor plan on each story. For this one, it is only necessary to utilize one structure block that is specified as six stories to begin modeling this structure. This one is similar to our first example where the area over the garage is not continuous to the story above. For this one, because all of the walls are offset inwards, you could utilize only one structure block to create the model. The technique of modeling this structure with only one structure block is demonstrated in the user guide tutorials. Alternatively though, since the area over the garage is not continuous to the story above, you could utilize two structure blocks. One specified as two stories for the main structure and one specified as one story. The choice of how to model it is ultimately up to you. But once again, the idea here is that we don't want to utilize too many structure blocks to overcomplicate our model. This example consists of a retirement home where only half the structure extends to the second story. For this one, it would be appropriate to utilize two structure blocks, one specified as two stories and another specified as one story. All right, looking back at the one story structure I showed you earlier, you could model it with only one structure block. Although, once you click on walls view, the extents of the structure will only occur where the structure block was placed. So it will be time consuming to adjust all the walls to match the structure, although it can be done. A better way to model this structure would be to utilize three structure blocks, all specified as one story. That way, when you move on to the walls view, you will already have most of the shape of the structure established and will not require as much time to establish the, the actual shape of the structure. What about this two-story structure? If you look at the roof shape, you can see that the second story is actually embedded within the first story. For this reason, it is only necessary to utilize one structure block, which is specified as two stories. How about this four-story building? You can see the first story on the left and stories two to four on the right. The left portion of the structure is irregular in shape, but the right portion is more consistent on each story. For this reason, for this one, I would recommend two structure blocks, uh, one for the irregular portion and another for the regular portion. Both structure, st structure blocks would be specified as four stories. What about this three-story apartment, which has the same construction in all three stories? For this one, only one structure block that is specified as three stories in height is necessary to start modeling the building. There is a tutorial in the user guide for this structure. Last example. This structure consists of a large first story with a small second story located only in the middle of the structure. For this one, it would be best to use four structure blocks. One structure block specified as two stories in the middle of the structure, then three one-story structure blocks specified around it. That way, after extending walls upwards, it will be easy to achieve the correct shape of the structure on the second story. Keep in mind that you don't need to have your structure blocks perfect the first time around, and it may be necessary to restart your model if you're not happy with how you set up your structure blocks um, after extending walls upwards.